right, so today we're going to be talking about oxyacetylene torches. Now, oxyacetylene means it's a combination of oxygen and acetylene. This setup right here is referred to as an oxyacetylene aviation torch set. Um, they call it an aviation torch set because it's small and portable as opposed to a larger set that you would find in a shop. When you are done working with one of our torch sets at LCC, this is exactly how it should look. When you have your own torches, you can choose to store them however you would like, but our torches should be, uh, the hoses should be rolled up neatly. The handle should be stuck in uh, either this compartment here, or it may be tucked down inside here and then all of the gauges should be sitting at zero. The first thing uh, that we're going to talk about is making sure that this is safe to start up. And the first step in making sure it's safe is making sure all the gauges are reading zero. The second step in making sure that your torch is ready to go is going to be to uncoil the hose. So I'm going to take the hose out and I'm going to uncoil it and I'm going to take all of the loops out. The reason I'm taking all of the loops out is I want the hose to hang free and be free of keys while I'm using it. Um, if you don't have your hose completely out and available and free to work with, there's a chance that in the field you'll be working in a tight spot and you will run out of hose because you have a loop in it or something like that and you'll have to stop in the middle of your joint. So we can now see that the hose is out. It's hanging safely and again the acetylene gauges are at zero and the oxygen gauges are at zero as well. So on the regulator, there are two gauges. This gauge, which goes up to 4,000 PSI, is on the oxygen tank, and this is reading the pressure inside the tank. The gauge on this side only goes up to 100 PSI, and it is reading the pressure in the hoses right here, going to the torch handle. On the acetylene gauges, the tank, or the gauge on the right hand side shows this acetylene tank pressure, which goes up to 400. And then the gauge on the left shows the hose pressure. And you'll notice it goes up to 30, but from 15 to 30, it's a solid red line. And that is because if acetylene is above 15 PSI at just atmospheric conditions, it can explode. So we never want our acetylene above 15 PSI. Now, once I open the tanks, you're going to see that the tank pressure is going to be well above 15 PSI. And that's because inside this tank here, there is acetone mixed with the acetylene. And that acetone mixed with the acetylene prevents it from becoming explosive. So um, all my tanks are at zero, all my gauges are at zero. And then these handles right here, these are my adjustment thumb screws. These are also loose. These are what we're gonna use to set our hose pressure, but they are loose right now and that's how it should be. So with everything set and ready to go, the first thing we're gonna do is stand away from the direction that this thumb screw is pointed and we're gonna open up the tank valves. So I'm starting with the oxygen and with the oxygen tank, you should open the valve all the way. Um, now with the acetylene, you can see that there is a little wrench that is hanging with the tank. 
This square wrench is what's used to open this tank valve, and I'm only going to open the tank valve a quarter turn. And I'm actually going to leave the wrench right on it, so that if I need to shut it off in an emergency, all I've got to do is push it back down. So acetylene is only open a quarter turn. Now, we can take a look, and we can see that there is approximately 1,500 pounds of pressure in our oxygen tank, and there's approximately a little over 100 PSI back here in our acetylene tank. So our tanks both have a sufficient amount of gas in them. Uh, the next step in the process is to look at your torch. So this is our torch tip here. And this has two knobs on it. This knob lines up with the red hose. And the red hose goes back and connects to acetylene. So this is our acetylene adjustment knob. And then this hose is in line with the green. And it goes back to our oxygen. And that's our oxygen adjustment. So our tanks are open. And our thumb screws are loose. And now we need to set our hose pressure. So to set our hose pressure, I'm going to crack open my oxygen. And I only opened it probably not even a quarter turn. And now I'm going to tighten this thumb screw in. And it's going to start to build pressure. And I want to continue to screw it in until I read 10 PSI. And if you listen closely, oxygen is coming out of the tip. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close that. And you'll notice when you close the torch knob that the pressure on the gauge may travel up just slightly, and that's okay. Um, so we're looking for about 7 to 10 PSI with our knob open. Now I'm going to set my acetylene hose pressure. So I'm going to open this again about a quarter of a turn. And then I'm going to screw in the acetylene thumb screw. And I'm watching the gauge. And I'm going to screw it in until I get approximately 10 pounds of pressure. Excuse me, not 10 pounds. 10 pounds is oxygen. Approximately 7 pounds of pressure. 5 to 7 is a good range for it. So, I now have that. If you listen closely, it is flowing, and I'm going to close it. And it went up to about 8 when it's closed. So, let's zoom in there so we can take a look. And you can see that our oxygen is lined right up down here with the 10 PSI line. And our acetylene, let's get the glare off of it is lined up with about at about eight with it off. So it, it went up just slightly. So now the torch set is ready to light. And um, to light it, we're going to use a sparker. Okay, so this right here is a flint sparker. It has a little flint on the inside of it that are replaceable. And when it's squeezed, it creates a spark. Now this is the only thing that should be used to light a torch like this. Uh, you should never use a Bic lighter or any type of other lighter because the heat that this torch, torch generates can be enough to cause those um, lighters to explode. You should also never work with a torch um, with a lighter or anything flammable in your pocket because it also could explode. So we're gonna use this to light the torch. Now, to light the torch, we're going to crack the acetylene open um, only about an eighth of a turn and then spark it. Now you notice when I first lit it, it was very small and there was quite a bit of soot coming off. We actually don't want any, we don't want that soot. Once it's lit, 
we want to adjust it until we have a light smoke. So I'm going to turn it down until I can just start to see some smoke come off it. And then I'm going to slowly open the oxygen. And as I slowly open the oxygen, you're going to notice the torch change. So right here, we can see the different parts of the flame. We've got the inner cone uh, right at the torch tip that's whitest. You've got a kind of a long blue flame about yay long. That's the mantle. And then the rest of it is the secondary flame. And we're going to keep adding oxygen until the mantle aligns with the inner cone. And so here you can see the mantle and inner cone are just about together. And right here is what we call a neutral flame. So it's a little hard to see on video. It doesn't pick it up the greatest. But a neutral flame. The inner cone of the flame should be rounded. Um, if you have too much oxygen, the flame becomes very pointy. And if you have not enough, the flame becomes longer and the mantle longer. So we're looking for a nice neutral flame. Uh, that happens, that is the best flame we can use for brazing. Uh, the tip of the inner cone, where the mantle and inner cone have now met, that runs somewhere about 6,000 degrees. So when we're soldering or bra when we're brazing with this, we want to be careful that we don't touch that to the copper because touching the inner cone to the copper can actually heat it fast enough to blow a hole right through the side of it. So I'm going to do a demonstration video for actually brazing and, uh, and show you that. Now, to shut the torch down, the easiest way to do it is to shut your fuel off first and then shut your oxygen off. If you do the opposite, if you shut your oxygen off first, you're gonna get a flame like this. And then when you shut it off, you're just going to get soot. So it's better to shut your fuel off first than your oxygen. Um, another thing to just watch for is if your gas is too high. Hear the flame. The flame is lifting off the tip. So there's too much fuel flow. So I'm turning the fuel down until it meets back up with the tip and then turning it up just a little bit, light smoke. There you go, back to a neutral flame and that's our goal right there. So, shut it off. Now, the shutdown procedure for this is going to be um, covered in the next video.